Shabbat Shalom. I want, I'm going to read a passage from uh, Shmuel Yosef Agnon, who the only uh, Hebrew writing uh, Nobel laureate, Hebrew, Hebrew writing Nobel laureate in literature, who's a, a pre-state and uh, Israeli author. Many people consider his masterpiece to be a work called Timol Shilshom, uh, which means like the day before yesterday, but in, in English, the only English translation is called Only Yesterday, and it's a, a story about a young man, Yitzhak Kumer, who uh, makes Aliyah and, and uh, kind of, um, well, you could read the book, but he, he, he lives in, uh, in pre-state Palestine before World War I. And in this part, he, he's just moved to Jerusalem from Yafo, and here's, uh, here's the description of Shabbat in Jerusalem. Isaac was most excited on Shabbat eves when the city stops its give and take and gleams with the light of the Sabbath. This is the light of Shabbat whose splendor glows even in the rotten generations. The sun has not yet finished its course in the firmament, but beneath the heavens on the earth below, a great change is already visible. The air is transformed and a kind of hidden joy rises. All the shops are locked and all weekday business comes to a halt. The streets of Jerusalem are emptied of carts and the holy earth dwells in silence. No wheel turns, no whip lashes. The expanses of the world are silent and a holy calm is ignited by the silence of the city. At that hour, the old, the old beetle, the uh, the shamus goes out from the great synagogue of Rabban Yochanan ben Zakkai and calls out, the time for lighting candles has come. At that hour, someone jumps from the homeless shelters on Mount Zion and goes on top of the roof of a tall house and blows the ram's horn to warn the nation that Shabbat is coming. Opposite him, one of the Sagadura Hasids jumps up on the top of a roof of the great synagogue to ferret Israel with a brass trumpet two cubits long in his mouth and blows. Immediately, they come out of the rest of the synagogues and climb up to the roofs and blow until their voice, their voice is heard outside the old city walls. Yeshiva students dressed in Shabbat clothes come and climb up on the roofs of the tall houses in the new city and ring bells in their hands to announce that the time has come to light candles. And in every house, in every courtyard, people hurry to prepare themselves to honor Shabbat. Here's a, a vision of Jerusalem. Seems like a, a, a vision of a peaceful bustle, different than the bustle of the business that happened right before that. I want to have this vision of Jerusalem right now because uh, right before the passage we read in the Torah today talks about the Yovel, the 50 the 50th year of the seven year cycles, seven, seven years, and then the next year, every seven year, the land lays fallow. Every 50th year for our ancestors, slaves were freed, and if, whatever land you acquired in 50 years, you have to give up to the people who originally owned it, and everybody goes back. So 50 years in the, in the Torah uh, was a special time. We're right now in the middle of 50 days leading up to Shavuot, from Pesach, the Festival of Freedom, to Shavuot, the festival, the receiving of the Torah, 50. And this week, as the cantor said, is Yom Yerushalayim, the 50th anniversary of the Six-Day War. Yom Yerushalayim specifically is the day that, uh, well, it depends what word you use, depending on your politics, but the day that Jerusalem was conquered, liberated, occupied, uh, united, it depends. So 50, it's the Yovel, a time maybe to contemplate, to, to reevaluate. So what I've passed out, hopefully there's enough, if not, uh, you can uh, look on the person next to you, Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, famous song, it came out in 1967, actually right before the Six-Day War. People think it's a song of the Six-Day War. It was right before the Six-Day War. There was the, a song festival in Jerusalem. Uh, the well-known songwriter, Naomi Shemer, 
wrote this song, and a, a newcomer sang it, Shuling Natan. Uh, then she became a star in Israel. So this is, like the passage I read, a vision of Jerusalem. So what I wanted to do for a few moments, on one side is the Hebrew, on the other side is the English uh, pretty straight translation of it. You could go back and forth if you want. Turn to a person uh, next to you, behind you. We're going to do this in Hebruta. I want you to read uh, this, this song. And then the question I want you to talk about for a few minutes, what is this vision of Jerusalem? And what is missing from this vision of Jerusalem? Okay, ready, go. <laughs> reason, the reason I brought these uh, two, two songs is because um, and we all know that Jerusalem is a complicated place. Uh, and that's an understatement. But uh, I think, especially in 50 years, it's good to contemplate, it's good to revisit, it's good to go back to our visions, our visions of heavenly Jerusalem, our visions of earthly Jerusalem, and how we kind of try to live in between that. So I want to leave us off with uh, with Shai Agno and more of the heavenly Jerusalem. A covenant is made with every city that stamp it, stamps its seal on its inhabitants, especially the city of God, most, most exquisite of all cities, where the Shekhinah, the presence of God, never moves away from it. And even if the Shekhinah is hidden and covered, there are times and seasons when even the most simple son of Israel, who was blessed to dwell in Jerusalem, will sense it, each to the degree of his sensibilities and to his merit and to the light and grace that illuminates his soul, and by virtue of the suffering he has suffered in the land, and that he accepted with love and did not complain. Shabbat shalom.